So for those of us who have been paying attention to the real reaction to the Rings of Power from around the world, the response has been overwhelmingly negative. The only positivity we've seen has come from paid outlets like IGN and the damage control pieces that the showrunners have put out at places like Hollywood Reporter. Now, there's a rumor that's going around right now that the Rings of Power showrunners are actually getting fired by Amazon. And I find this fascinating because if it's true, then it means that Amazon is actually paying attention to things and it could shape up for a better season two. Again, it's a rumor. I don't know. It's not fact. We're going to be diving into this today. This got shared with me earlier this afternoon, and I had to jump on it and record it because I was like, well, I need to know more. So uh, I'm Tim Anderson, a.k.a. Renfield, the Bearded Dwarven Princess. If you are a returning viewer, welcome back. And if you're new, you know what to do. Like, subscribe, hit the bell icon so you get more of the same. And don't forget to support because that's how I stay on the air. You can join as a member of the Adventurers Guild down there. Three different tiers. If you're here during the premiere, like I am, chatting away in the chat window down there. Let's hang out. Let's chat. Do a super chat. Do a sticker. Drop some sort of contribution to the channel. And after the fact, if you're watching this later on as an upload, you can simply do a super thanks and... That's how you support. It's really easy. Let's dive into this. So this is over at um, the well, the website that I'm looking at is Bounding Into Comics, which we've used uh, multiple times in the past. They tend to be a little uh, more ranty than I am, and I usually take them with a grain of salt because they have a very one-sided take on things that can often pull things out of context. But for the purpose of this video, we're not actually here for on a fact-finding mission. We're just here to actually dive into the rumors behind whether or not this is actually true, and if it is true why it could be true. So, it says here that, uh, dun, 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 word of the shakeup was first suggested by noted film critic and industry insider and film threat founder Chris Gore during an appearance on the 314th episode of the YouTube live stream show Midnight's Edge in the morning. When they were discussing the first season's finale with that day's panel, Gore was eventually asked by host Andre Ein Herjar, what have you heard from your peers in the industry? Is everything, is everyone so impressed with the Rings of Power like the showrunners suggest we should be? Like if you watch the Hollywood Reporter, or if you read the Hollywood Reporter article, it's all about how, oh, the show's doing amazing, the critics love it, um, don't worry about the audience scores, you know, critics are blah, 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 whatever. Damage control. And he said, uh... No. In fact, said Gore, not only were his industry contacts unimpressed with season one, but the reception to it was so generally abysmal that Amazon has set out to course correct for season two. Gore said, I heard from somebody, someone who has a connection at Amazon, if you want to know, that effectively said they're going to be retooling Rings of Power and Payne and McKay are more than likely they're not going to be publicly fired but their role will be reduced, potentially just remaining in the writer's room, he added. But my understanding is they are looking for more experienced showrunners. To this end, Gore detailed that Amazon is well aware of the problems before noting that while there's what they publicly say, there's also what they're actually doing behind the scenes. And what they're doing behind the scenes, he then asserted, is they're freaking out that this was more of a failure than could have been anticipated. Gore speculated there are three reasons for the change. Quality of the show being the first thing. Audiences are like, why am I still watching this? This is sleep inducing. The second thing is the total rejection from fans. Duh. Um, he says, I can't believe there's got to be very few people who remain who still like it. Honestly, the only people I've seen who actually like the show are people who have never read the Silmarillion or never read beyond the Lord of the Rings or they've never read the books at all. And they're only familiar with Peter Jackson's films. That's really the only people I've seen who actually like this show. Fans who have read the books in depth and who have read the Silmarillion and so on and so forth, they are I haven't met a single person, haven't seen a single thing. And again, confirmation bias is very dangerous on the internet because my results are filtered just like everybody else's results are filtered because of the way that I view things on the internet. Um, but I've not seen or heard anything from any actual Tolkien fans about this show being good. Everyone is pretty much, it's reviled across the internet. 
And thirdly, he said there's the direct competition from House of the Dragon. Even like pre-seed and post-seed of the show's airing, it started earlier and is ending later, that being House of the Dragon, thus keeping it in viewers' consciousness for longer periods of time. And it said, though it may be years before Gore's speculation is outright confirmed or denied, the damningly low audience scores currently held by the series on review aggregate sites like Metacritic and Rotten Tomatoes make it clear that something needs to be done should Amazon hope to justify their billion-dollar investment. As of this writing, Rings of Power currently holds a collective 2.5 of 10 rating across 2422 on the former outlet over at, uh, yeah, that's bad. That's bad. Now, again, Amazon claims review bombing and, and so on and so forth. But honestly, it's just the fans being really, really, really upset. What's interesting to me here is the idea that uh, Payne and McKay, they might not be publicly fired, but their role would be reduced. They'll be back in the writer's room. So what I would anticipate, if this is actually true, if this is more than just a rumor, they will get reduced from showrunners down to probably retain their executive producer credits and have like you know lead writer positions on the show or some type of control over some component of writing because again remember one of the things they were known for before they get hired to be showrunners was script doctors and for all intents and purposes we've heard that they were good at their job now just because they didn't actually have anything that ever got produced I know a lot of people have have taken that as some sort of proof positive. I've even ran with that um, as some sort of proof positive as, the, as though they're not very good at their job. That's a little bit of an exaggeration, and I'm happy to admit that because in the world of television, look at like George R.R. Martin. The guy's been around forever. Game of Thrones is a big deal. He has still had multiple projects go through a writer's room and never make it to actual series order so have many other showrunners ronald d moore is another good example of a guy who has had many projects which hit the pilot stage some of them didn't hit the pilot stage many things did hit the pilot stage so on and so forth but a lot of things have never gotten to completion um that's just hollywood People produce scripts all the time. People produce pilots all the time. Those pilots get viewed. They get voted on. They get thrown out. It's a normal process, and sometimes people can work on... There have been actors, as examples, who have done 10, 15, 20 failed pilots before they ever land like a leading role on a show. And in the process, they're getting paid for each time they do a pilot. So they're still working actors, and they're still contributing and advancing their career slowly but surely and that's the same thing that's happened here so it could be the fact that their script writing experience is good enough for them to be in the writer's room but not as showrunners on the show but here's the thing amazon is not going to want to admit that they had a failure so whenever if this actually does happen if they do reduce um pain and mckay's role it will be it will be done in a pr marketing way and they will make an announcement, Anazama will make an announcement that they're stepping back because uh, of whatever reasons. And it's not going to be because they were, it's going to be because they were, you know, other commitments. And they're still going to be writers on the show and they're still very involved in everything else. But we're going to bring on this other person who's a good friend of theirs and, and so on. It's going to be a PR spin if this ends up being true. Because they would be stupid not to hire a more experienced showrunner. And says here that. My understanding, Gore says, my understanding is they're looking for more experienced showrunners um, because they're well aware of the problems that have been going on. So um, it, there's nothing wrong with giving someone their shot. If someone has a good enough pitch, then maybe they've got something. But the problem is that if you've invested hundreds of millions of dollars, and they have at this point, Amazon has invested $700 million, according to The Hollywood Reporter, just in season one, between the rights and the production for the first season, um, they can't afford for this to be a failure. It has to be a success. There are no other options on the table for Amazon other than to force this to be a success. They have to course correct. And if they actually are considering this, and this is true, then the only way to do this is to bring in an experienced showrunner and the best way to do this would to be looking at someone who has a track record for coming into productions and you know making award-winning television 
Now, that's going to be hard because most of those people are already committed to working on other projects. But that's not to say they can't find someone who might be in between things. They might be able to make a big enough offer that goes, hey, man, look, we'll give you this big ass paycheck to come in and, you know, help bail the water out of the ship and keep it from sinking under. And that might be enough to sway somebody. Um, I can't personally, I can't theorize about who would be the right person for the job. Um, it needs to be someone who is passionate about Tolkien and knows the lore forward and backwards and is going to actually respect the lore. But the problem here is that season one is already out. The damage has already been done in terms of creating these characters that no one cares about that are completely invented. And if these are going to be the characters that they have to move forward with, because they've already made commitments and set up storylines and, and all this other stuff, they have to find a way to bring those characters back into line with existing lore. And I don't know how you do that when you have a bunch of invented bullshit like Bronwyn and Nori and the whole Harfoot tribe and the three ring wraith sisters that naz girls um naz girls yes um i don't know how you recover from that i don't know how you fix that i don't know how you fix halbrin being sauron because he wasn't one of the valar you know he wasn't mimicking being from sent from the valar you know so it's it's a completely different timeline They've got invented characters. They forged the three elven rings before any of the other rings, which is wrong according to lore. They've broken the lore on so many fronts. I don't even know what a retooling could look like. But I don't know. There, there is a way. Is there, I guess, is there a way back? That's a, that's a hard question to answer because fans like myself have, have been so burned by season one that even if they brought in a really good showrunner, the question remains, like I just said, how do they fix the things that are already screwed up? Because you can't just wipe the slate clean. Like, they can't just erase it and say, well, guess what, guys? That didn't work. Uh, we're going to reboot and we're going to start again and we're going to have this new version you can't do that so they have to pick up where the story left off and figure out how to how to course correct from there and i just don't know how that's even possible remains to be seen again this is only a rumor at this point so i don't know that there's any uh, truth to this but uh considering gore is a very respected figure in the space um, he's been around for a long time um I think that what he says has, at the very least, it has some weight behind it and some credibility because of who he is and his connections. And the rumor mill has been swirling that, um, you know, Amazon is not happy. And I feel like the Hollywood Reporter piece was a big red flag about how desperate they were to do some sort of damage control. Because like I said, Amazon can't afford to lose face on this. So they're going to need... The, the showrunners out there telling people how great it is, how amazing it is, so that whenever they decide that if this is true, whenever Amazon decides to put those guys back on the bench in the writer's room, it's going to look like it was the right thing to do because that's what needed to happen for the betterment of the show. And it's going to be them agreeing, oh, yeah, we, 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 we launched it. It's good to go. We're going to go over here and we're going to help the new showrunner and we're going to support them in all these ways um, and we're going to make it even better season two. Um, that could very well happen. Um, again, who that is, I don't know, but they definitely need an experienced showrunner at the helm. Now, beyond that, um, the fact that the, it's been rejected by the fans, um, th that's a hard, again, the audience falling asleep, I've heard from a lot of people who haven't even read the books that have watched it and said they don't like it. Here's an example. Um, we, we play every Sunday night. We play our tabletop, uh, the world weave in the void. We live stream those sessions with our friends and partners. And um, Bounty Code and Sparrow's children have tried to watch rings of power i'm pretty sure it was them who was telling me it was either them or somebody else somebody one of the people we came with on a regular basis have several children and those kids tried to watch rings of power and those kids literally like one or two of them like 
just walked out of the room 10 minutes into the first episode because like this is boring like i don't this not even it's not inter- it's not interesting to me at all so it's like there's a lot of people who just aren't finding any reason to want to watch the show because it's just boring and that's that's a thing that you have to fix secondary to fixing it for the fans um the fan thing i don't know how to fix I really don't know a way back from that. The competition with House of the Dragon, I think you just need to put that out of your mind. Because House of the Dragon is House of the Dragon. It's Game of Thrones. And Game of Thrones was around way before Rings of Power was. And you're just not going to be able to compete with that. You're not. No amount of money that you throw at your show is going to create a prestige television show to rival Game of Thrones. Because Game of Thrones has... Experienced showrunners, prestige acting, thespians of the highest caliber, not these little actors who have never done anything and they're getting, you know, $20,000 paychecks for their time. You know, they've got actual thespians who have 30 years of craft behind them, along with some newcomers. But, you know, House of the Dragon has showrunners who are experienced, set designers who are experienced, costume designers who are experienced, VFX designers who have a lot of experience, and they have a proven track record with the Game of Thrones um, TV show of having done it before regardless of what you think about the last couple of seasons of game of thrones it still was it is recognized as like one of the best if not the best pieces of television that have ever come out from a from a from a network and you're not going to magically and overnight somehow go up against house of the dragon and find yourself winning that battle so i think that you just i think amazon needs to put that out of their head i think they need to focus on getting the lore right If you can focus on getting the lore right, you're going to make me happy. And you're going to make the fan. I'm a fan. If you make fans happy, we're instead of making Rings of Power rant videos, we're going to be making Rings of Power woohoo videos. And that word of mouth is going to spread and it's going to make your show into that water cooler show that you want it to be. But that's not going to happen unless you stick to the lore and do the fans right instead of what these two showrunners did. I always forget their name. Um, Payne and McKay or something like that. Yeah, they just they didn't do fans right. They did fans dirty, and that's why the show is getting the revel, you know the reviled views that it has. But I don't know. Love to hear your thoughts on this rumor. Drop them down in the comments below. If you have links to a more credible source than this, I would love to hear those links because I will totally do another episode and cover those. If there's an actual better link to this, um, other than you know a YouTube video where. A guy who is respected in the industry was talking about it. I'd love to see if there's anything a little more concrete. Um, Like, subscribe, hit the bell icon, support in any way you can. Easiest on one of these premieres like this is Super Chats. Don't forget the memberships, Super Thanks, Patreon page. And hopefully everybody everybody will stick around for the next episode because we're doing Wheel of Time. We're doing House of the Dragon. We're doing Rings of Power. We're doing the Mondays of Middle Earth show. We're doing the upcoming Willow show. We're doing Star Wars and or and so much more. So I'll see you in one of the other episodes. Peace!